Are you looking for the best strategy you can use in OET Listening Part A? In this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to help you master this part of the listening test and get you a high score. Hello everyone and welcome back to another OET video from Swoosh English. My name is Grace, I am an OET teacher and academic manager. Now, although part C is generally considered to be the more difficult part of the OET listening test, that doesn't mean that part A doesn't also present some challenges. So it's really important that you have a good strategy that you can use during this section so that you can complete the test with ease and confidence. And that's what I'm gonna help you with today. Now, before we begin, let's have a quick overview of exactly what's involved in OET listening part A. So in part A of the OET listening test, you're going to listen to two separate audios. These audios will be consultations between a patient or caregiver and a medical professional. Now, please remember that the listening test is the same for all professions. So the consultation you listen to may be between a doctor and a patient, but it may also be with a vet or perhaps a dentist or a nurse. So it could be any healthcare context. You will answer 24 questions. So that's 12 questions for each consultation. And the task that you complete is note completion task. So this means that you will be listening to the audio and filling in the gaps with the missing word or words. Now, before each audio starts, you will have 30 seconds to read the notes and prepare to listen. This is essential time. And if you use it wisely, it can really help you to get a high score. So we're going to look now at exactly what to do during that 30 seconds preparation time. So here is our example for OET listening part A. You can see you've got your patient notes and 12 gaps that you're going to complete. Now, during these 30 seconds that you have to read the notes, there's a few things you're going to do in order to prepare to listen. So let's go through these step by step now. Firstly, you'll notice that the notes have some headings. Now, these are going to be really useful to help you keep your place in the audio. So if any point you get lost, you can use those headings to guide you. Now, taking a look at a few specific questions, the first thing you're going to do when you look at the gap is to predict the answer. So looking at number one, what type of word is going to be in this gap? So pain located in, we know from looking at this sentence that it's going to be a noun, and we can take a pretty good guess that it's likely to be a body part. Now we've done that, we're going to consider how this might be paraphrased in the audio. So think about some synonyms that you might hear. So for example, instead of saying the pain is located in, the patient might simply say it's in my or the location of the pain. So we've had um, a thought here about how this might be stated in the audio, because of course it might not be stated in the exact same words. Moving on to the second one as an example, once again, let's predict the answers. Pain described as being similar to, so again, most likely going to be a noun and we're listening for the type of pain, a description of the pain. Um, thinking then about synonyms, so how the patient might express this, they might say it's like, or even it feels like. And then moving on to number three, describes feeling as something, so looking at this sentence here, we know it's going to be an adjective. And then we're listening for most likely a feeling or perhaps a sensation. Now, how might the patient say this in the audio? Uh, well, they might say it feels or even the sensation is like. So there we go. That's our strategy then. We are looking at each of the gaps. We are thinking about the type of word that will go in the gap. And then we're thinking of synonyms for how we might hear that word in the audio. Now let's have a look at the audio transcript and see if we can get the answers for these first three questions. If you'd like a little challenge at this point, pause the video and see if you can find the answers to questions one, two, and three. Okay, how did you get on? Well, looking at number one, the patient says, it's a really uncomfortable feeling in my hips, in my hip joints. So there we have our answer for number one, hip joints. For number two, they say it's kind of almost like toothache. 
So you can see how this has been paraphrased in the audio. So instead of saying the pain is similar to toothache, the patient says it's kind of almost like toothache. So you can see how thinking about synonyms and paraphrasing has really helped us out here in being able to identify the answer. And number three describes feeling as, well, our adjective that we were looking for was agonizing. So that is our strategy. This is what we're going to do during that all important preparation time, the 30 seconds that you have before the audio begins. You're going to take note of the headings. You're going to briefly look at each gap and think about the type of word that's missing. So noun, verb, adjective, adverb, or if possible, can you think of more specific details? Like, is it going to be a body part, for instance, or perhaps it's going to be a type of medication or a symptom? So using the notes to help you predict the information that you're going to hear. And then once you've done that, just thinking about ways that this might be paraphrased, because of course in OET listening part A, what you hear in the audio will not always match exactly what you see in the notes. So it's very important that during those 30 seconds, you prepare yourself to listen as much as you possibly can. So now we've done our preparation, let's go to the transcript and see if we can identify the answers to those first three questions. If you'd like to have a go at this for yourself, then pause the video here and see if you can find the answers for questions one, two, and three by looking in the tape script. Okay, now let's go through the answers together. So for number one, we had pain located in, and we guessed that this was going to be a noun, most likely a body part. Let's check to see if we were correct. The patient says, it's a really uncomfortable feeling in my hips, in my hip joints. So yes, it was a body part. The answer was hip joints. Number two, we were looking for the type of pain. Let's have a look in the transcript. They say it's kind of almost like toothache at times, but in the body. So you can see here that there was some paraphrasing. So it was really good for us to consider use of synonyms when we were guessing the answer to this question. Because instead of saying the pain is similar to toothache, the patient says it's kind of almost like toothache. But because we kind of predicted this, we were prepared to hear that. So going on to number three, describes feeling as, we know that we were listening for an adjective and they say that really agonizing sensation. So the answer there was agonizing and well done everybody if you got those answers correct. So now you've got the strategy that you can use for OET listening part A. I'd like to end with some final tips. So tip number one is to not panic if you miss an answer. Remember, you're only going to hear the audio once. So if you miss an answer, try not to panic and just move on to the next one. If you start panicking and worrying that you've missed an answer, it might cause you to miss even more answers in the future. If possible, write a guess, but the main thing is that you keep listening. So that brings me to tip number two is to stay focused. If you do lose your place in the audio, try to use the headings to help guide you and get you back on track. Tip number three, do not write too much information for each gap. Remember, only one word or a short phrase is going to be enough. And tip number four, try as best as you can to write your answers nice and clearly and get your spelling correct. Remember that you won't necessarily have to spell all of the words completely accurately in OET listening part A, so there is a little bit of room. However, it is important that the examiner can at least see the word that you intended to write and it's clear. So as best as you can, try to get your spellings nice and accurate. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you enjoyed the strategies that you learned today, then please do leave us a comment down below. If you have a question, please feel free to add that and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, if you're looking for more materials and support with your OET listening test, then head on over to our website, www.swooshenglish.com. Take a look at our exam preparation courses. We've got mock exams, live classes, writing corrections, and so much more. Don't forget that if you're studying for OET, you need expert help and advice, and Swoosh English can provide that for you. So I hope to see you in a Swoosh English class very, very soon. And until then, happy studying, everybody. Goodbye.